Hi everyone, my name is Adam Herring and I want to talk to you today about using some learning theories to yours and your students' advantage. So I've got some learning objectives for you all about the three learning theories we're discussing, behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism. Um, I want you to be able to briefly describe the basics of each theory, list some pros and cons for each, give examples of how they, are con they can be put into practice, list multiple implications for teachers, and then also be able to describe your own teaching philosophy as some combination of these theories. So let's get down to the basics. Behaviorism. It's essentially where a student is going to respond to any type of stimulus. The teacher establishes an environment that's going to favor the desired behaviors. For example, a teacher will reward students for following the classroom rules and penalize them for breaking the rules. Pretty straightforward. Some of the pros are that it's really easy to implement and to deal with simple problems or help them understand simple concepts. But it doesn't really address higher order thinking or skills. Another approach is using cognitivism. This is where a teacher would organize and present content in a specific way to help students master difficult ideas. Prior to teaching a difficult concept, you might introduce topics or ideas that are going to help them to master earlier, easier concepts before the challenging ones. So this really helps to scaffold learning in a, in a particular sequence that helps to support mastery of hard concepts. However, this can be difficult to implement when you've got lots of um, abilities in your classroom. Strong students and, and weaker students, uh, you'd have a difficult time implementing uh, lots of different scaffolds. For constructivism, this is where a student is going to build their own knowledge through exploration activity. And they might do this by performing their own investigation. So they could look into how um, the phases of the moon works by um, observing the moon over periods of time. So some pros with this is it allows them to be very autonomous and you can address a wide range of abilities and interests. However, it can be um, difficult for the students to learn something that, that you want them to if it's not as directed and it can take a really long time for them to complete. So keeping this in mind, what are some implications for teachers? So behaviorism is about shifting actions. Um, I'll leave this little comic here for you to read. Um, but you want to be focusing on the learning environment. This is a good starting place for lower levels of learning, but it can be difficult um, because this can have implications that you might not think. If a student becomes conditioned to receiving a certain reward for doing um, for behaving well, then if, as soon as you take that reward away, then they might not behave as well as you would have hoped. Cognitive, cognitivism is about scaffolding learning. Um, this, you can use lots of strategies for this. An introductory hook, a pre-quiz, graphic organizers, these all will help to get them thinking about the material in advance and help you to be able to scaffold the learning so they master the content. This is good for more challenging material. Um, and you're going to set goals with these, but be careful because setting two specific goals can limit growth. Constructivism, where students are building their own knowledge, they're going to get hands-on experience with the materials and the activities and the ideas. And they're gauge, engaging in real-world problems. This is great for high-level learning and allows for varied interests, but it's difficult to manage for the teacher if you've got lots of different activities going on at once. Um, you can see that you could use these strategies with the same students at different periods of time. And so you want to be able to um, think of these as tools in your toolbox to be able to be an effective teacher. So I want you to think about what your philosophy is. Find an example in your own teaching or learning where the same person or group has used all three of these theories or approaches. And then think about when were they effective, when were they not effective. And then how are you going to use these theories and approaches to help students learn? Thanks for watching. If you would like to learn a little bit more about these different theories, I've got some resources here for you.